Hey guys, in this video I'm going to talk about the latest updates to Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom and I want to share with you how the new AI masking function works and how we incorporate it into our existing workflow and how I would use it moving forward when I'm doing some local adjustments in my images. So we're going to pull up a raw file here and I'll show you how it works, where the tools are found and hopefully give you a few insights into how you can use it in your own post-processing workflow. Okay, let's go. So I've opened up a raw file in Photoshop and as it always does, it's given us Adobe Camera Raw to process the raw file or ACR. This is where I do the majority of my processing. If you're a Lightroom user, these two applications are incredibly similar. It's obviously the same company, so the layout now is um, almost identical really. And when it comes to the updates that we're gonna be talking about in this video, they're the same thing. So what the updates are, it's all about local adjustments. So when we go over to our right hand side here to these tabs, this is where we make what's called global adjustments, meaning if I adjust anything, it's going to apply to the whole file. So it's globally. But one of the most powerful ways to process is to do local adjustments. The main tool I used to use is the adjustment brush which would have its own button over here they've now removed that and as along with the grad filter the radial filter and they've put it all into this mask button over here masking so when we click that so this is what the updates all about we select that and then it says all right what do you want to do do you want to use a brush the grads here they are here these are the new features sky selection subject subject selection and selecting color or luminance and when we do this now, they make it like each individual adjustment creates its own layer or what they call a mask. I think they should really call it like a, a new layer really. But anyway, uh, so let's have a look. For example, if I was going to use the brush like I always would, if I click that, here comes all the adjustments we can make with the brush. I'm just going to put the density up. Normally I have that all the way up as well. The feather and flow are like 100 as well. And t typically what I'd use the brush for is say, uh, in hand, it's like dodging and burning really, but I like to use it for bringing out light. So pulling up the whites, I would use that on something like say the water where I'd come over here and boost some of that natural light that's skimming across the surface of the water. Like so, maybe this nice light down here on the rock. Maybe I'd warm that up a little bit as well. Then if I want to do a new brush, I just push K, which is the shortcut for the brush. When I push K, I instantly get a new brush. You can see up here now, it says new mask, new brush. That's the old one there. If I click that, I can go back and tweak that original one. And then otherwise I can, can I go back to the other one? No, it doesn't look like it because I didn't do anything. So again, I'd push create new mask with a brush. And down the bottom, I have reset sliders automatically. So every time I do a new brush, or any adjustment that's just going to reset all the sliders, which I recommend you do. It's a pain in the butt to reset them manually. So maybe I'll warm up some of the light down here. Then maybe I'll do a new one. So I'll push K. And for example, I might warm things up and potentially add some haze. So rehaze along the horizon for argument's sake. So this is typically what I would do using the adjustment brush and definitely will moving forward. Uh, kind of cool that they finally put these mask boxes here because I can see each one. In the past you would have all the pins all over your file and you'd have to hover over each one to see what it was doing. Whereas now I can look at the mask and go, oh yeah, that was the sky, that was the foreground, etc. So let's have a look at one of the, probably the best features I reckon is the sky selection. So if we say create new mask, select sky, it's quite intelligent does a really good job here at isolating the sky of the image, particularly on a shot like this where you have a high contrast scene. So there we go, everything that's red is now selected. And this allows us to adjust locally on the sky only when I start to play with the sliders. If I wanted to work on everything but the sky, I could push the invert button and it would switch the mask around. But for now, let's just work on the sky. So for example, I would darken the sky in this image. So now I just pull the exposure down we can see that's perfectly working on the sky. Bring the highlights down a touch, maybe a little bit warmer on the white balance, for example. But again, we still want to isolate the sky locally even further. So this is where potentially I would do a new mask, use the grad filter, the linear, and maybe I would just darken, bring the blacks down. So it'd be more contrast on the edge itself, like so. 
So for me, I think I'd primarily be utilizing that sky selection. That's pretty awesome, particularly when you have something that's jumping above the horizon, like this sea stack, maybe you have a lone tree or something like that. If you make an adjustment and you want to remove portions of it or erase it, we can do that by using the subtract feature. So for example, let's just maybe make this filter a bit more dramatic just to emphasize what we're doing here. Now let's say I like what it has done to the sky for argument's sake, but I don't like how it's hit the C stack. We can use the subtract button. I typically use the brush here. This is where I dial back the density and this is like an eraser. So now if I run along, I'm essentially removing the linear filter, that grad filter from wherever I want to. So it's like your adjust raising some of that mask or the adjustment you can see what it's doing there if i do command z then it's going to put it back in so just keep that in mind that's with any of your adjustments you can always use the subtract and then just erase it off specific zones and again if you want to go back and tweak one when you hover over the mask now you can see it's showing you where it's applied so let's say the foreground potentially it's a bit too warm so i could jump in dial back the yellow for example so on and so forth so really cool um nothing groundbreaking aside from the the sky selections definitely awesome what about the other features that they've got here these next ones to me are probably better suited to maybe like a portrait photographer let's say select subject how is a computer going to know in a landscape what the actual subject matter is the main subject so let's try select subject for this image i guess it's you know the c stack really um but let's just see what it does here so that's good it's recognized a c stack but of course it's grabbed onto the water here and then also on that side so this is really pretty much garbage um because any adjustment i make now will be on the stack as well as the water it's just defies there's no point trying to use it like that guys and i dare say for most of the images landscapes you're going to have that problem if i push delete on that mask it gets rid of that now and we don't have to worry about it um, so you can just delete these as you go through if you want to get rid of all of them as well you can push this button up here to just reset everything you can also turn them on and off by pushing this so you can see what we've done there just locally already and the difference that local adjustments make so some of the other ones are the color range and luminance so color range allows us to use the eyedropper here select a specific color let's say these orange tones and then again go in and make local adjustments purely on that tone i can't really see myself ever using that to be honest again i'd rather just use the brush the adjustment brush and if i want to work on something let's say the water if i want to adjust the color of the water for me personally it's just easier to jump in grab the brush maybe make a temperature adjustment on the brush let's say cooler and then we'll pull up the density and now i'm just going to paint the water so i'm doing that adjustment on the water so i don't know i just find it easier to do it that way than trying messing around with using the different colors and it's somewhat the same for let's say we jump into the luminance range i could maybe use this i don't know it'd have to be a pretty specific image but what this allows us to do now is to make an adjustment and then remove it from a specific tone so you have the luminance slider here if i pull the slider off the shadow end we're now removing the selection off anything that's dark so it's only going to remain on the bright tones so let's say now you wanted to make an adjustment only on the bright tones we can do that or the other way around maybe we only want to work on the darks so we're just going to pull that selection off the darks so anything that is red will now get the adjustment so maybe for example you wanted to just bring up the exposure on those darker tones now we could jump in here and then we do that now the problem with this one is look how bad that is getting in some of those areas where the tones are kind of merging together it's it's not good this is what's going to happen if you try and break things down with its color and luminance there's areas of the photo where the luminance and the color they're all overlapping in the most minute of ways and if you're just working on one individual portion of that there's going to be this stark difference like what we're having in that water so i'm going to command z or even better just click on that mask and delete and get rid of that one get rid of that nastiness so there you go that's the main update they've applied to lightroom and acr i definitely will continue using the brush as i always have 
to do my local adjustments. And I think that Select Sky is a pretty awesome thing that they've incorporated as well. I also like the fact that it is broken up into these layers now. So we can easily just go through, see which one's which, continue adjusting it. You can even turn them off individually back and forward. So you can do a before and after. For me, from a teaching perspective, that's really handy as well. Uh, so yeah, there we go. Hopefully that made a little bit of sense to you. Like I said, it's not necessarily a big game changing update, but it's just a nice way that we can further localize our local adjustments and break down individual portions of the image to make our edit. The main advice I would say is just be careful when you are localizing, if it's something like luminosity or color, keep an eye on the surrounding tones and make sure you're not having too much of a differential between your edit otherwise it's going to look nasty pretty quickly so that's why for me like i said i'd probably more use this just as a quick selection tool like working on the sky but then as always i'm just going to keep using the adjustment brush to do the bulk of my adjustments but anyway have a play around with it now you know at least where they've tucked away the brush and the grad filter as well and yeah it's just another positive um using this type of software the fact that they're continuously um, updating the technology it really does just make our workflow get easier and easier all right that's enough from me guys i'll see you in the next video